Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a Will I Bite video. These are some of my favorite videos to film and I feel like there are so many new launches that I want to do these more frequently during the holiday season. Once we're done getting through the holiday rush, maybe I will slow it back down to once every other week or so but I feel like I wanna do them more frequently so I can chat more with you guys about upcoming makeup launches. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on YouTube. I do upload every other day, so I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Also, before I forget, all the resources I do use to make this video happen every week are always linked in my description box, so you guys can check there. And all my discount codes are also in my description box, you guys. I know it's the holiday season, we're shopping for ourselves, we're shopping for our friends and family. So if you guys wanna save some money on Sigma, Proper Beauty, Midas Cosmetics, I've got a bunch of brands in the description box where you can save some money using my code. And if I don't have a code, I usually will list my friend's code so you can save some money on that as well. I also got tagged in an Instagram account called Guru Codes, and they're just all about sharing YouTubers different codes. So again, if you like to save money like I do, because I'm always looking for codes for makeup because I'm buying so much makeup. It always helps to have a little bit of a deal. So if you want codes of YouTubers, I would follow Guru Codes. I'll try and remember to link them down in my description box. I hope they keep that Instagram going because I think that is a good resource for makeup savages like me. And I know Amy Loves Makeup, who is Indie Makeup Spotlight, also linked in my description box, does have a Google Doc this girl is not messing around, has a Google Doc of everyone's codes in the description box of Indie Makeup Spotlight Instagram. Also, my friend Jamie, who runs New Makeup Releases Radar. Ugh, I feel like I said too many words there. I will put her account here. She is on top of everything from luxury to indie to brands I've never heard of. She's posting on there constantly. So I would recommend checking her out as well. Oh my gosh, sorry for the long intro, but there's so many people out there killing it on Instagram and YouTube. Like I wanna get all my shout outs in guys. I'm so sorry, but what can I say? If you're wondering what's on my face today, this is the new Kaleidos, the Fresh Fantasy Collection. So I think this video is gonna be coming up next. You guys will have to subscribe to my channel to check out this look and what products I'm loving from that collection. So let's head on over to Miss Trend Mood. This palette, I swear I saw it last night and I thought they already launched it. It's kind of a joke to me, to be honest. If you guys buy this, like I would kind of judge you because they're just recycling all this Kat Von D packaging. I don't get it. Like, I'm sorry, Sephora, Kendo, Vegan, Kindness, Love, Beauty. The whole point of ditching Kat Von D was to kind of bring the brand in a new direction and I, I just don't see it. Anyway, oh, let me move over too so I can put pictures here. So this is the Kitten Mini Glam Rock Shade and Light Eyeshadow Quad. This is a neutral palette with a pop of blue. And listen, I am a sucker for a neutral color story with a pop of blue, pop of green. I will take it, but in this case, it's just an easy pass, so pass on that. Sugar Pill is launching five dreamy eyeshadows. We have Sleepwalker, Flurry, Helium 16, and Ego. These will be out September 29th. And Sleepwalker looks beautiful. I can't tell if it's like an iridescent or if it's just a shimmer mint shade. It's probably just a shimmery minty shade. I want to love Sugar Pill, but I feel like for their price point, their eyeshadows really don't live up to the hype. So it's an easy pass for me. Insert name here is a hair company. It's actually run by Jordan and Sharon from ColourPop. I think Sharon used to be at ColourPop. She, I think, works on INH full time now, but I think Jordan is still part of ColourPop. They're so sweet. I've like followed them throughout their journey on ColourPop social media, and it's so fun to see them like killing it with INH. And they're doing this really cool 
launch where they're doing hair pieces that are inspired by um, Disney princesses. So I definitely sent this to all of my Disney crazed friends. And I just think it's fun. I really want one of their ponytails. Desi Perkins is always wearing it on her Instagram story. She has like this slick back ponytail and I would just love to have one of those pieces. I actually bought a piece, a really long ponytail from INH when they originally started. I don't really wear it that much. So maybe I should just cut it, but I feel like I should just buy the shorter ponytail. But we'll see, we'll see, who knows. I am trying not to buy everything I want these days. I'm trying to limit myself and I'm also trying to budget with these holiday launchers that are rapid firing in my direction. <laughs> it's, it's a tough world out there, guys. Okay, so this palette, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. And the fact that it got posted on Trend Mood, like now there's gonna be, you know, extra eyes on this, which is so amazing for the brand as well as the collaborator. If you guys haven't guessed yet, I'm talking about the Shroud Eyeshadow Palette with Butte Bean. It's called the It's Freaking Bats Palette. I found Butte Bean because she commented on my videos back in the day. I think Betty Jean, Probably when she was in the like thousand, two thousands of subscribers would comment on my channel. And so then I went on to her channel and I'm like, this chick is so talented and it's been so fun to watch her grow. And now to get this awesome collab with a brand like Shroud, which is also a one woman show and a female owned India brand. I love that. I actually followed the owner of Shroud, Chloe on Instagram as well. So I am so excited. Congratulations to the both of them. And Butte Bean, I just love this so much because you know this is her color story. It's authentically her. She didn't do like a bunch of neutrals just to sell palettes. She went with something that was truly her. And fortunately for all of us, we all love a good green purple color story. So I am so here for it. That shimmery chartreuse shade when she swatched it and her two duochrome shades in this palette, I was like salivating when I watched Butte Bean swatch these. So if you guys haven't seen the palette, definitely go and check it out. It is pre-order October 4th at 9 a.m. Pacific. And I think that's 12 Eastern Standard Time. So I'm really, really excited. So, so I finally broke down and I made a purchase from Holo Taco. I do love nail polish, but I'm trying so hard not to buy nail polish. But this shade, you guys, it just got me. It's the one called, it's called Mist Shift and it's a vibrant cool green and whips through shades of teal before striking purple at the right angle. This looks so beautiful. So this will be my first time trying Holo Taco. And there was another shade that I had seen Teresa is dead wear in a video. It's like a beautiful green from like a rainbow collection of theirs. And so I ended up picking up that green too. You guys know I love green. It's one of my favorite colors to wear. So I'm very excited to have Holo Taco heading my way. Their nail polishes are definitely pricey, definitely more than what I usually want to pay for when it comes to a nail polish. But listen, I was so excited for those two colors. So I will definitely keep you guys posted on them. I did take a little poll on my Instagram stories and a lot of you said the brand was really good and definitely worth a try. So I did take you guys' advice and I picked some stuff up. So I'm so excited for that. Okay, the next thing is another new release that I'm so excited for. This one is targeting Halloween and this is the ColourPop Hocus Pocus collaboration. Now, I had to shamefully admit that I honestly don't know if I've seen Hocus Pocus and if I have, I wasn't paying attention. It was probably playing in the background and I was maybe like passively watching it because I know the witches and stuff, but I couldn't tell you the story of Hocus Pocus to save my life. So I was like living my best life, not paying attention. And then I saw ColourPop was like sneak peek and then they showed the stuff and I was like, Oh my God, I want all of it. I think it's so cute. Actually, I just want the eyeliner pencils and the palette because the palette is like a grungy, colorful color story. I think it's giving me a little bit of like Lunar Beauty Moonspell vibes as well. So I literally had just posted the other day that I had finally like shed that like hold ColourPop had on me because there was a time I was making 
multiple purchases from ColourPop in a month and it was definitely a habit that I wanted to break. Thank God for quarantine in some ways because having ColourPop shut down for a few weeks really helped me kind of not be addicted to that like purchasing high that I would get from ColourPop. So now I've become like way more selective with my ColourPop purchases but this one it really caught my eye. I still don't know if I'll buy it. I'm definitely not gonna like hop on one foot to try and get this because I know it's gonna be like one of those that quickly sells but I'm so excited that they did this and I am definitely interested in picking up the palette and the eye pencils. Okay so here's one that I feel like so many people have been so conflicted about the Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity like mega palette launch. So I think in my last Will I Buy video we talked about the launch and stuff like that but I ended up actually making a video where I swatched my two limited edition Star Wars palettes and you guys really enjoyed that video so thank you so much for checking that video out and if you are new from that video hey <laughs> hey thanks for coming like I love Pat McGrath and the fact that you guys really responded to that video makes me so happy so I did end up buying this palette and honestly I didn't really want to give her my money I was really kind of ticked off a bit because it's repeat shades and it's so I don't want to say it's sad but it's kind of like annoying or rubs me the wrong way that she relaunched them for a much more affordable price and then instead of even making them separate palettes for people that didn't get them which like I get it like if you're unhappy and you really wanted them the fact that she's relaunching them at a more affordable price is great for you I'm not gonna be mad at you about it but as far as the brand I'm annoyed and I can understand there's so many other collectors that are annoyed too because we paid $65 each for the Star Wars palettes and now you can get those shades, all 12 of those shades and six new ones for less than buying those two palettes and I get it, it was like a collaboration with Star Wars and they have to pay for the copyright and stuff like that but it's also kind of like a little bit of a dick move to your like loyal fans that have been buying from you. And I also get the argument that maybe this palette was not intended for people like me, but again, as a collector, like, hey, I kind of want to have, you know, a little bit of every collection. So I was definitely conflicted and I definitely didn't want to give her my money. I was going so many times back and forth because Two of my really good YouTube friends are gonna be trying Pat McGrath basically for the first time with this palette. So I'm so happy for them. But on the other end, I was talking to my other YouTube friends that have all the Pat McGrath stuff and they're like, seriously? So I see both sides of it. I did end up buying it because I'm a sucker and there was a discount code. So I was able to save a little bit of money. And so I bought it because I wanna have it in hand so I can compare it to the Star Wars palettes and if there was any difference in quality and stuff like that I want to be able to compare them so look forward to that video in an upcoming upload <laughs> from me. So the next thing I want to talk about is this new Sculpt Collection by Melt Cosmetics. Now I love this. I love this. I love that they went straight for the deep skin tones. She did say um so Laura was talking about the other co-owner and said that she works with a lot of deep skin tones and she feels like creams translate really well on deep skin tones, which made sense to me. I mean, I've never done makeup on a very, very deep skin tone, so I don't know that for myself, but if this works for somebody with deep skin tone, like that's awesome because we all know that deep skin tones are kind of neglected in the market as well as really light skin tones as well. So I think it's really cool that they started off with this. What I want to know is that Melt has plans to expand this in the future because I feel like if this is all they do with complexion, I think it's going to be a missed opportunity for them. So I hope to see lighter cream contour shades, more blushes, bronzers, and things in the stack packaging. I think that'll be really cool. I know I love Melt's blushes and highlighters, so if they maybe branch into doing some kind of build your own stack system on their website, I think that will be super duper cool. So we'll see how that goes. This collection did already launch. It's available. There is a PR box for $145. And if you guys bought this, I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments because it's not my skin tone, so I would be curious to know if it worked on 
deeper skin tone. So let me know if you guys have seen anything about that. Uh, so Laneige launched two limited edition lip sleeping masks. So they have the lemon one and then there's like a choco mint one. I have two of the Laneige lip masks. I have one down here in my makeup room and then I keep one upstairs in my bathroom. I put that on almost every night because I do have a few other lip balms that I mix and match with and I'm maybe halfway through the one so even though these are so cute and the little pot packaging is so appealing, I'm gonna save my coin and pass on those. And also speaking of more lip balm, e.l.f. launch more shades of their Ride or Die lip balms. I did pick up two of these just to try out and they're pretty nice, but I feel like those two new shades, that PSL shade and the Cheeky Cherry are basically like these two colors and these are from their Seriously Slick lipstick line and don't they look exactly the same? So I feel like it's just the same colors with a different balm texture and I like the ones I have so I'm actually going to pass on them. But if you're curious, I would recommend because those shades are so, so pretty. So ColourPop's latest launch is their new Sandstone collection. There's a palette, there's cream shadows, lippy sticks, and liners. Again, I kind of want to pick up these liners, so I'm hoping they don't sell out before the Hocus Pocus because I would love to pile that all into one order, to be very honest with you guys. I have a very large... ColourPop eyeliner pencil collection just because I think they do such unique colors and I think they're reasonably priced. That's my thing with eyeliners. I feel like so many brands that have the fun colors, it's way more than what I'm willing to spend for a little piece of pencil that I like rub on my waterline. <laughs> you know, like it's crazy how eyeliners are almost $30 these days. Like I will pay a good money for like a good black eyeliner, but when it comes to colorful eyeliners, no thank you. I will pay under ten dollars that is my price point so anyway that was a long tangent about eyeliner pencils but i think this is a nice palette is this something unique to me absolutely not it kind of reminds me of like the quarter rosa meets the untamed <laughs> minus like the blue so i definitely don't feel drawn to this palette but i know a lot of you were really excited some of you were disappointed because of the packaging but i think i heard angie say I think Angie said in her Will I Buy It that ColourPop has said that they will change the packaging on the next run of that palette. And I feel like that's the best they can do. You know, they learn from it, they got your feedback, and they're going to make a change, and I think that's good. P. Louise palette, this is hilarious. So they are sneak peeking this P. Louise palette, and honestly, I feel conflicted because I like P. Louise's formula. I did pick up their Worldly palette. The only thing is, this palette is huge, and if they put it in the style of palette that the Worldy palette is, it's going to weigh like two tons. Like... They're gonna need to charge like $50 to ship that 60 pound palette to me. And I'm not really about that life. If I could give P. Louise one piece of constructive feedback, it would be please change your palette packaging. Just make it smaller. Nobody wants a whole vanity case to lug around with them on jobs or even if you're just an everyday makeup person. I love the grungy tones, I'm not gonna lie. But I feel like this is the ColourPop Hocus Pocus palette just blown out. I'll probably end up passing on this because let's be real, I won't be able to pay the shipping. It's probably going to be like a ridiculous amount of money. So easy pass on that for me. Okay, I wanted to talk about these Suva UV Hydrafix liner palettes. I feel like this was such a too little, too late move on Suva's part because I feel like these colorful cake liner palettes are like a dime a dozen these days. So I wish they had done this a little bit sooner for them because they are a small woman of color owned indie brand out of Canada. So I would have loved to see them capitalize on the Hydra liners because they had those way before they became like wildly mainstream. So it's such a bummer that they have to play catch up but I think it is a cute idea and it makes cake liners more accessible for everyday people. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the Wayne Goss The Weightless Blush Palettes. These are so eye-catching. When I first saw these, I was so excited because this is the first thing that he's done with his brand that really caught my eye. You guys know 2020 has been the year of like blush for me. I've bought so many collections worth of blush and I was really excited about this like it looked beautiful I was convinced I was like this is gonna be the first thing from Wayne Goss that I buy 
Then I posted it on my community tab and a lot of you pointed out, hey, these blushes look a lot like the Colored Rain Power blushes. And I was like, yeah, I see it. But I really saw it in Angie's video today because she posted a picture of the Wayne Goss collection and then she posted the shades from the Colored Rain collection and they are uncannily similar, like really quite similar. I'm sure they're not exactly the same, but I feel like why would I pay whatever Wayne Goss is going to charge for when I can support a small women-owned, women-of-color-owned indie brand and the power ones are on sale so you can get all four for 50 bucks. So now I'm like, I don't think Wayne's going to get my money. <laughs> I really don't. And then he made the most awkward. And then I watched his reveal video and I was so confused because he kept saying in his video that his target audience was 40 year olds and like 40 year old women and how the makeup industry leaves out the 40 plus age group so much. But then he didn't include anyone that was 40 years old swatching the product. So I feel like this is gonna sound really harsh, but this is what I feel. I feel like Wayne Goss's mediocrity, medioc yeah, mediocrity is really overlooked by the makeup community. And I wonder why, because sometimes I like listen to people go on about like Pat McGrath and Charlotte Tilbury, and I'm like, they their products, like maybe they're not always for me as far as like pops of color and stuff, but their stuff is like on point. Like Charlotte Tilbury's campaigns are beautiful. And sometimes I just feel like Wade Goss is like a really bad salesperson. Like his videos are like badly lit. And I'm like, you're showing me your product for your luxury makeup brand. And you're telling me that it's for 40 year old women. And he also made like a big deal about saying that 40 year old women are his test market. And I'm like, so you couldn't find like one 40 year old to swatch for you. And then, I don't know, it's just strange. Like in his first video, he left like women of color out of the swatches, but now he has somebody doing those swatches. So I don't know how to feel about it. Like I know that brands aren't perfect and like I'm not expecting anyone to like be perfect, but I would love to hear what you guys think. Like. Am I being too harsh? Because if I am, that's fine. I won't be as harsh, but I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, I just, I just want to see him do better. Put your money where your mouth is. I would like to see that from this brand because I'm like, I was so excited for the blushes. And then as soon as I went and looked on the Colored Rain website, I'm like, why would I pay Wayne Goss prices when I can pay Colored Rain prices? I, I guess that's what it comes down to and I would much rather support Colored Rain, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's all I have on that. Now this is where you guys will see my bias show because so many people are like, what the heck is this? This is a perfect example of like when you see somebody launch something and it totally makes sense. Like how the Shroud and Butte Bean palette totally makes sense for Betty Jean. To me, the new Makeup by Mario line makes perfect sense for him. And I have a soft spot for Makeup by Mario. I don't really know why. I went to his master class and he seems so focused on the art artistry. That's what I love about him. He's not about the bullshit. He's not about, like he doesn't come on camera like Scott Barnes with like a fake tan and like, and like, look at me, I'm the best. Like he doesn't have that vibe. He just seems so humble. I could be wrong, I don't know this person, he could be a jackass, but I did get to take a picture with him at least, and he was very nice for the two seconds that I got to take a picture with him. And I got to sit in his master class for a whole day, so I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of my friends have been to his master classes, so he seems like a genuinely nice person, right? But as far as just the makeup, like not review the person, let's talk about the makeup. I think this is, perfectly sensible stuff for him. Like the all shimmer palette and the all matte neutral palette. Like I think that makes perfect sense for a makeup artist because if you're a makeup artist, you don't want your shimmers to mix. That was the whole reason behind Viseart never having 
shimmers in their matte palettes when they first started. Now they're mixing and matching, but, but if you're using like matte eyeshadows for things like television or your professional makeup artist, you don't want to contaminate your matte eyeshadows with shimmer particles because some cameras and some lights can pick up those sheens that you didn't mean to have in your makeup look when you're working with TV and magazine and print and stuff like that. So it totally makes sense. I'm so excited to see more of this collection. I know he's doing little reveal videos with every product as he kind of shows them. I think the post was leaked. From what I can tell, his makeup line was leaked before he could start sneak peeking it. He did talk about it a little bit on his Instagram. So I kind of feel bummed about that, but I'm interested, I'm excited. I'm not saying I'm gonna buy all of this stuff just to support him, but once I see everything like swatched and shown and revealed, if there's something that catches my eye, I would totally be down to pick something up. I just think like 20 years in the makeup industry, like I just have mad respect for Makeup by Mario, so very excited about that collection. Next, we got to see the ABH Holiday Collection. So this, I think, is so cool. They did a mini soft glam palette. It is a bite-sized glam, and this is $29. They also have the Lash Brag Mascara Mini for $13, and the Ultimate Nudes Mini Gloss Set for $28. These are all launching on October 5th. And I think this is so, so cute and so smart for the current market. I think that this will get people that were totally freaked out by buying a $45 nude palette at places like Ulta to take a second look. And it's smaller, making it more compact if people have to go places or like in the holiday time you're traveling to go see your family and stuff like that. I think this is going to be the perfect travel palette. I could definitely see myself suggesting this palette to all of my friends that aren't makeup YouTubers that just want like an easy neutral palette. Plus I love the soft glam palette. I know people gave it shit but if you want like an easy neutral palette that is definitely one that I would highly recommend. So I really, really, really think that was a knockout palette launch from Anastasia. I do have a feeling they're gonna do a holiday palette. I hope they're gonna do a holiday palette because I want a holiday collection from them. So we'll see. We'll see what they surprise us with, hopefully. And then I wanted to talk about, ooh, I forgot to talk about this last time I did a Will I Buy It, but Morphe launched these nine pan palettes and they're so cute. I was so tempted. I know my friend Angie bought uh, two of these. I know she got the khaki one and she got the color me cool, I think. And then my friend Kara also got both of those. Kara said they were okay, I think, from a live she did. So I am happy I actually ended up passing on them because as much as I wanted them, I also don't need them. So happy that I passed on that. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about from INH was this quick slick product they came out with. It's basically like when I use ABH Clear Brow Gel to tame my baby hairs. They came out with a product specifically designed for that. I love ABH Clear Brow Gel for that, but it's so pricey. I was hoping this was gonna be a little bit cheaper. I mean, it's like $18, so it's not horrible. So definitely considering trying that for the future because I've tried like hair gel, I've tried hairspray, and having something that has a good grip that is in a mascara wand format is ideal, so I definitely will be keeping an eye on that. And I think that's basically it for my saved folder, so let me hop on over to Indie Makeup Spotlight and see if there's anything here. Oh my gosh, what? She's got a sneak peek from Davina. This is the new Aurora Flare collection launching October 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can use Amy's code AmyLoves to save money. This shade Polaris, holy Santa Claus. I'm gonna need that. I am definitely gonna need that. It looks like the Holo Taco nail polish I just bought, so thank you, Amy, for posting that because I probably would have missed it. There was also a launch from Terra Moon. They launched some new shades for fall, as well as some lip glosses. I really like Terra Moon. 
I'm just trying to take a little break from them because their eyeshadows are very expensive and I feel like I've been reaching for my eyeshadow palettes way more than my single. So as much as I love Terra Moon and as much as I would love to encourage you guys to check them out, I just need to like lay off because I'm on a budget, okay? I can't buy everything I want like I used to be able to. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and then we have a sneak peek from... M Cosmetics. They are in the development of this beautiful palette. This is inspired by uh, the Monet Jasper Stone, which she posted like sneak peeks of this and stuff, and it was really interesting. So she is doing a medium skin friendly version and a light skin friendly version, and she said that she has two people that volunteer to do the medium swatches, so I'm very, very excited. This looks like a beautiful collection. I know Amy loves their shadows. They are based in Canada. It's a small indie brand, so definitely gonna keep my eye on them. I will probably end up passing on that particular collection because, again, I have a lot of makeup trying to make through reviewing what I have before I buy more things at this current moment in time. Another one of my favorite brands that I discovered in 2020 is, is Muse Beauty and they are launching a new lip collection. I think I saw Annette show these. There's like a liquid lipstick type product and then a sheer gloss and I'm sure these will be good because their eyeshadow palette is so good so I can't imagine that the lipsticks would disappoint at all. Okay guys, I think that's it. I think I talked for about an hour in my mind. <laughs> I need to go get my dad. I dropped him off at church this morning and I need to go pick him up. So thank you for chit-chatting with me about new makeup releases. Let me know what products you are eyeing in the upcoming weeks. Now that I know that there's gonna be a new Davida collection, I'm gonna need to start saving those pennies. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys!